Hey folks, Phil the Man here. I had a few questions, so I'll say a bit more about uh, applying the mic gone. This is a uh, formic acid system uh, based uh, from a uh, beekeeper in BC. And I think it's, uh, it's labor intensive, but it's quite effective. Uh, at least for large users, he ships it in these uh, cardboard boxes with a fairly heavy plastic liner and the sponges are inside of that. So, uh, and they're shipped dry, that solves a lot of problems with uh, hazardous goods and you buy your formic acid locally and then you pour the formic acid right in to the container, fill it right up so the sponges soak up right to the top and uh, then you can handle them fairly safely. I use tongs. I guess I should switch hands to the hand that has the gloves on and then you would just grab, grab a couple pads with the tongs And there's two per hive. So I usually grab grab a few like that. And it's fairly safe to handle that way. There's, if you're doing it right, there's no liquid uh, ingredient uh, out in the field. And that increases the safety quite a bit. So here we are. I've got the uh, pads already on the hive. And I set up another trial. It's another yard site with uh, higher mite levels. I think at this site we're 4%. So another deck of playing cards. And in this case, and I use those just because they're already laminated. Uh, they use, you know, uh, and you can shuffle them and make a random trial. So and you can staple them on the front of the hive and you know what you're dealing with. So in this case, uh, Reds, uh, queens, uh, or uh, hearts and diamonds are formic, and then the comparative treatment, the uh, gold standard treatment is apovar. So I'll put apovar strips in the spades and clubs, and formic in the hearts and diamonds. So I'll have 26 of each. And then, so those sponges I've laid down with the tongs. It's nice to let them air out just a bit so any liquid material on these sponges evaporates before you seal the hive. I'll come in and with uh, toothpicks, and I'm working on Sunday here, folks. So. Uh, no cameraman today. So, uh, last time I did this, I used a single toothpick, and I realize now that the, the last time I used this product, most of my frames in the brood chambers were still wax foundation, and so they, you could poke the toothpick right through. I'm pretty much into all plastic at this point, so I need to do a better job. And so I'm breaking that toothpick in half and using it kind of like a staple. So break it in half, bend it over. And press it in. And then I'll drop those frames so that this pad is right against the outside wall and then I'll add the second frame I've stacked up there and you can see that each hive I've taken out two and I do this all one step at a time because it's gloves on gloves off all the time otherwise and it's way safer to do each step the bees don't seem to mind being open a little longer so uh, that's that's Mike gone uh, great name. Uh, Randy Oliver doesn't think too much of it. And, I mean, there's some sense in what he said, which is that it's just a sponge holding formic. Uh, the 
The part of it that matters really is this plastic wrap that goes around the sponge which reduces the exposed part of the sponge to this little bottom edge and so Bill tells me the product will gradually migrate down through gravity and evaporate off the end over a fairly long period of time. So you get a, a, low, do a low sustained dose. I know that uh, trials at the University of Manitoba trying to do formic over winter, they found that the long slow dose was the most effective. And so I think that this is attempting to capture that same sort of thing. Now, we'll find out. I will come back and do mite sampling when we pull the strips. And then we're going to compare uh, a, a mite sampling in the spring. And I also should have some mortality data. I mean, hopefully they all live, but uh, that's never the case. And so we'll see, we'll compare the two groups. Because there's two factors. One is, does it control the mites? And also with the formic, is there a risk of losing a queen or other, other problems? So uh, what really matters to a beekeeper is the long-term survivability of the hives. All right, so that's Mike gone. Have a great day, everyone.